Welcome to Gus Tech. My dad works at Valve. Oh, and how's your mother? Actually, my dad doesn't work at Valve. If you watched the video we made a few months ago, um, very clearly doesn't have any idea how a computer works, but that's okay. We today are gonna talk about something that's important to everyone on the planet, and that is how to effectively back up your Steam library. So Steam is fantastic, and they're working on some major overhauls to the entire UI of the Steam app you know, to hold all your games and everything like that. And um, some of the beta releases that we've seen of it, or at least the leaks, um, it looks really nice. Although big picture looks awful and they're kind of basing it off of some of those things. So, you know, th they'll perfect it. Valve always does a good job of making it work after a while. But here's the thing, before Valve does a great job and makes sure that everything is revamped and finalized for the future, right? Which is cloud-based and all this great new tech you still have to manage your own backups. Now, this is meaningful in a few different scenarios. Maybe you're, a, you're like a mobile gamer, right? And you wanna have your Steam library backed up onto a mobile SSD so you can plug it into your friend's house or you can take it with you and you know, uh, without crowding up your laptop's hard drive space from your desktop. This is a good way to do that. Um, on top of that, it's also a great way to back it up if you're going to do a reformat, which on Windows, it's just the nature of the beast. Once every year or two, you're probably going to want to do a reformat. So we're also doing a video on that, but this is going to be focused in almost entirely on backing up your Steam library and how to do it, um, you know, with a pretty efficient and easy process because Valve's actually made it super simple. So it's going to be a shorter one, but let's dive right into it. First, talk about there's a couple of different ways to back up your Steam library. You can do it directly through Steam's app. Um, I'm not as comfortable with this way of doing it because I want everything, my config files, everything to be saved um, the right way and know that if I replicate it, it's going to be able to, to you know, go to another machine. So, but to do that, it's real simple. Um, like I just showed you, you click on Steam, you go down to backup and restore games. Um, then you just select the game that you want. Uh, it's really easy. You can actually then select, you know, wh what pathway you want it to go to. Um, it's not that hard. But let's talk about how to do it in Windows, which I think is the more reliable way. It's the way that's probably not going to change because um, this is the way that Steam's done their directories for um, over a decade. So <clears throat> what we're going to do, open up one window with this PC open open up another folder with our Steam folder. And it's real easy to get there. Just go this PC, local disk, program files, x86, probably, and then go to the Steam folder. And again, this is all probably. This is the most likely place where it's all gonna be. Um, now, to back up the Steam library itself, your Steam library is gonna be in one specific section, and that is the Steam apps. You're gonna click on Steam apps, you're gonna click on common, and here you go. Here are, this should contain most, if not all of the games that are installed in your Steam library. And at this point, you can literally just copy all of this and paste it to the drive that you want. So we're gonna go down here to the Samsung T5, which we have plugged in. We have a video on that, uh, link in the description below. Click on new folder, and we're gonna do Steam backup. Back it, back up, whatever. Uh, this folder is not in this video, so anyway. All right, literally, it's as simple at this point. Um, if I just want to back up my Counter-Strike folder, I'm going to go down here and uh, just drag that baby. Now, you can see it brings up a little copy window, and this is going to take a little while, right? There's a ton of little files, and that actually makes the transfer speed go down because smaller files need to be kind of, you know, they're not going to go as quickly as like a big, large file. But either way, this is a very quick drive, and you can see from our SSD to Samsung T5, it's like lightning speed. Um, <clears throat> very simple and very easy to get this to work. Now when you're doing this, um, when you go on to the new computer that you're going to be using, my recommendation is to always have Steam installed on the main C drive of the computer. Okay, so you go in here, local disk, x86 on your program files, and install Steam, um, you know, the same place every time on any computer that you're using. And then it's going to be really simple if you have like an SSD like this, 
where you can actually map Steam to look into the SSD, or you can just copy it onto the, the hard drive of the computer that you're using, either way. I think there's obviously, um, you know, just from my standpoint where I've been using, uh, you know, I've been using computers for a long, long time, and my preference is definitely to have it on the actual hard drive of the machine that I'm using because something could bump this SSD and disconnect it. And that to me makes me, you know, I'm not as confident about that. So this is a great solution. It is pretty lightweight. And as you can see, if I'm copying, you know, a whole 16 gigabytes of Counter-Strike, um, it's gonna be done in, in a couple of minutes, even with all those small files that take longer to copy. So. That's the way that I prefer to do it. Um, if you do want to route it directly through Steam, that's not that difficult either. So again, the primary thing that I'm concerned about is the fidelity of the backup and the files. So what I typically tend to do is I'll actually copy everything to the C drive after I've already downloaded the game from Steam's official servers. And the reason is because there's an installation process that it needs to go through putting certain DLLs on your computer, right? And if you just copy over the files, generally that's gonna work if you do that and then you just go into, you right click on the actual game, which I'll show you here. You can right click on the game, go to properties, and then click on local files, verify integrity of game files. You can do that once you've put the folder already into the Steam Apps folder. But I prefer to download the game make sure it's all installed properly, and then I copy over my backup into the folder that's already been made by Steam. And that makes it so it's, it's you know, no losses, no issues, no DLL problems, which are pretty common um, when you're doing backups like this. So that's the way that I've done it for years and years, and that's the way that I know will probably always work with Steam and Windows. Um, it's super easy, it's super functional, and that's the process. Um, there are obviously other ways of backing up, like I said, through the Steam official client, and there's other ways of backing up not going into the Steam apps folder, but typically you don't need the entire Steam library download because, or excuse me, the entire Steam library folder, the Steam folder, because that is, uh, is something that you can download and get onto your computer from the internet in a matter of a couple minutes. So typically I'll go in there, install that, and then as soon as I wanna have the Steam app, I'll double click on it so that it, it obviously starts downloading through Valve. Download it, may take a little while, but then I copy over all those files, and then I know that the game, when it opens, is gonna run exactly how I had it before. Now keep in mind, here's one major issue that I have with the way Steam backs up everything and that issue is that if you have any launch commands for your games, so if you go into the right click set launch options here, um, excuse me, right click properties and then set launch options, this will not have anything saved. So if you have like no video or if you have certain launch options like the, the FPS or whatever, the, whatever you have for your certain games, um, that's not going to be saved and uh, I, I don't know how to get that to work and that's kind of unfortunate but the launch commands are not typically that hard to, to replicate. Um, the other thing you'll have to note, especially in a game like Counter-Strike, if you have key bindings, you will have to remap those key bindings and that's just the, the nature of how Steam works, you have to redo those things. Um, but it's, uh, you know, it's typically not that tough to find those key bindings online or if you have, you know, like a notepad, you want to save it. Um, I typically, for any time I have a, 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 I'm moving my system or I'm going to be using it remotely, um, I'll make sure that I have a backup of the Steam commands that I need to run or the, the console commands I need to run to run the games that I want the way I want them to run. All right, so we have backed up the Steam library and we actually just did a brand new fresh install of Windows. We're gonna show you how to do that here, how to move everything over. Now, like I said, I like to download and do a fresh install directly from Steam's servers. If you don't have a good DSL, reliable DSL connection, you can copy over uh, this backup into your Steam apps folder and do, you have to make another folder called common. So you may want to make one, just start the download for one game. It'll make a common folder by itself or you can do it yourself too. Um, but if we just click on, for example, 
Age of Empires, you can see, okay, here we go. It now populates with a bunch of folders, okay? So click finish, okay, great. Now we have our common folder. This is where all the games are gonna be stored, okay? Um, if you want to, you can copy all of this down into your common folder, but make sure before you run the game, you do a right click, properties, you click on that uh, verify integrity of game files in the local file right here. Um, and that's gonna again take a little bit more time, but if you have a metered connection or you have a slow connection, that might save you some time. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna download each one of these games individually through the Steam app. And then once that's completed, we are then going to literally copy all these folders, paste them into here, and replace everything. And it's gonna say, you know, that little that little thing's gonna come up that says, uh, replace these files, and we're gonna say yes, and do this for all existing things. Great, click the little checkbox, click go, and it's gonna replace all the files. And everything is gonna be saved exactly the way that you had it before. And that's what's so cool about doing this process. Now again, the only thing that won't be changed, and this is a little annoying, but I'm assuming that Valve is fixing this when they update Steam, your launch options will not be saved and your key bindings will not be saved. You just have to have those either memorized or in a notepad file that you can reference uh, once you have your game installed again. Okay, so as you can see, we just downloaded faster than light because it's small, that's the main reason. Um, but all you're gonna do is select the file right here, drag it down, and it's gonna say, place files in this destination. Yes. Biggity boom, Dunsky. That's it. That will save all your settings. Everything should work just fine the way it was before. And uh, that's how you do it, guys. Super cool, super easy, super breezy, super sleazy. Just like we do on Gust Edge. So that's it, guys. I told you it was going to be quick and easy. Um, moving your Steam library is actually a pretty easy process nowadays. There's a lot more you can do, there's a lot more in depth you can go, but that's the simplest way and it's the way that's probably gonna be the most reliable for the longest period of time, even if they update Steam. So uh, thanks so much for watching. We have uh, links in the description below to pretty much everything we've used to shoot this video, as well as uh, some videos that are related to some of the products that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. You can check out down below. Yeah, 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 we know you love you guys. You guys love it, yeah. Also, uh, we have a reformat video coming up next week. Make sure to check back on that one. Every Wednesday, we're gonna have new videos for you. We're Gus Tech. We are reliable now for the first time in three years. I know, you didn't believe it, we didn't either, but here we are and we're doing our thing. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comment section below. Hit that subscribe button, like it, share it, do all the things. We love you guys, we're Gus Tech. We'll see you next time.